Murder by Experts. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Murder by Experts with your host and narrator, Mr. John Dixon Carr, world-famous mystery novelist and author of the recently published bestseller, The Life of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Good evening. This is John Dixon Carr. Each week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of crime and mystery which has been chosen for your approval by one of the world's leading detective writers. Tonight, our guest expert is the noted mystery writer, Eliezer Lipsky. From the many thrillers he has read and enjoyed, Mr. Lipsky has selected a fast-moving, sardonic story by Joseph Ruskell. And now we present Kenneth Lynch in Dig Your Own Grave. <laughs> the question. Did you or did you not kill your wife? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? That's a good one. How can I answer it like that? Just plain yes or no. I've been wondering myself, who was the killer? Me or that crazy, suspicious mind of hers? My wife was a very strange woman, and I want to get you inside that mind of hers. You'll know then just how it is that a wife could dig her own grave. I swear I was always true to Hannah. It's important you understand that. Up to this incident, I never even looked at another woman. She'd never believe me, though. Never. You don't fool me, Eric. You were quite a lady killer when I met you, and men don't change their spots. When she met me. <laughs> but what the years had slapped me down to, time and a nagging wife, all the jobs she cost me, all the future with her suspicions. Don't lie, Eric. You're clumsy at it. My mind works faster than yours. There's a woman in your life somewhere. She was driving me crazy. She didn't trust me. Why should I trust you? How about the times I phoned you at Charlie's poker parties and you weren't there? I won't be satisfied until I've found that other woman you're playing around with. I'm trying to get you inside that mind of hers, you understand? I swear there was never any other woman up till that time. And then one day suddenly, through a silly circumstance, Hannah got the wild notion she'd at last discovered who her rival was. It's that young Betty Heath, that little actress who lives across the street. But, Hannah... Don't lie. I saw it with my own eyes, didn't I? You mean about the dog just now? Yes, about the dog just now. But I can explain that if you'll only listen... You can explain everything, can't you, Eric? But I'm one person you can't fool. Hannah, for heaven's sake, where are you going? I'm going across the street to scratch her eyes out. Hannah, you'll disgrace us before the neighbors. I swear I don't even know the lady. Hannah... Hannah! Yes, I want you to leave my husband alone. What? Who are you? What are you talking about? You didn't pretend, Miss Heath. I can read through you and him both. I'm Mrs. Hannah Green, as you no doubt suspect. Get out of here. Get out of here at once or I'll call the police. You wouldn't dare. You're out of your mind. I don't know your husband and I don't know you. Oh, I do seem to have met you. Your type, I mean. You're the kind who digs your own grave, aren't you? Uh, 
Miss Heath? Yes. Pardon me, you you don't know me. I live in the apartment house across the street. I I came to apologize for something that happened here the other day. Apologize for what? Uh, my name is Eric Green. Eric Green? Oh. So you're that mad woman's husband. My wife is very neurotic, Miss Heath. But why she come barging in here? What on earth gave her the idea that I... I mean, that... Well, <laughs> You well, I, I, I was standing outside my apartment house, and a dog came up to me. It seemed lost, so I kind of walked it, wondering whose it was. Hannah saw me and recognized the dog as yours, Miss Heath. Oh, so you're the one who found it. So that's why you're... Wa- <laughs> I see. So I gave it to your doorman. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Green. That was kind of you. Yes. Well, you see, that's how it was. She thought all kinds of things, you know... <laughs> Yes, I can imagine. Well, that's all I came to say. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. I guess It was I... awfully nice of you. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 I interrupted you. Well, I just I was... wanted you to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It was all my fault. I don't know why I've been keeping you standing here at the door. Wouldn't you like to come in and have a drink? Yeah, I'd love to. And that's how it all began. For eight years, I hadn't looked at another woman. Then fate, in the guise of an unwitting Hannah, had introduced me to Betty Heath. It became a secret love that never would have been born if the twisted mind of a jealous wife hadn't conjured it out of thin air. I missed the next three Saturday night poker sessions. Eric, it's nice here. I like this place. Yes, it's sort of our place. I was never here with anyone else. Eric, what did you do with your Saturday nights before? Oh, I don't know. Poker or an all-night movie to forget I ever lived. Oh, no, don't, don't talk that way. Betty, how do you feel about it? About what? Us. Are you scared or anything? Oh, what have I got to be scared about? My goodness, I, I simply felt sorry for you that first day I saw you. And honestly, you were so pathetic. And Well, I, I, I knew you needed a friend. You know, to maybe get things off your chest. <sighs> Funny thing. Right now, I don't think Hannah even suspects I do know you. Well, she certainly was suspicious the day she stormed up to my apartment. <laughs> Why the change? Well, search me. She hasn't said one word about it since then. I think when she came charging up to your apartment that day, she expected to see, oh, some wild painted chorus girl, a <laughs> glamorous actress, see. But instead, she sees a sweet, innocent kid and gets thrown for a loss. <laughs> you kind of threw me for a loss, too, Betty, going for a guy like me. Why not? Eric, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm a fake. I've no acting talent whatsoever. Oh, Betty. I can't get jobs. I'll never get anywhere. What I really want is to get married. Married? Yeah. There was a very nice fellow named Tommy Burke. He asked me to marry him. Why didn't you? I don't know. Met a married man. Name was Eric Green. Isn't that funny? Yes, that's how it all began. A drink, we talked, saw each other a few times, and we were in love. We didn't talk too much about Hannah, not at first. She was always there, the third point on the triangle. The longer Betty and I went on seeing each other, the more she crowded into my thoughts. Until the day came, it had to happen. Eric, it can't go on. It's got to stop. I'm much too much in love with him. Vice versa. Head over heels. It's not as though you're free, Eric. Don't you see? It, it, it's not as though you were even ready to get a divorce. How many times have you gotten that off your chest to me? Bonds and ties and pity. All right, then I'll get somebody to pity me a little. There's still Tommy Bird. No, Eric, don't. Don't come in. We must never see each other again. Eric, why 
are you sitting there so moody? Please, Hannah. I have an apology to make, Eric, dear. Yes. Oh, Eric, I must be a trial to you sometimes. But it's only because I love you. What are you driving at? Oh, <laughs> that dog thing that time. That dog thing? Yes, you remember. Well, I later asked the doorman there, and he said the dog was lost that day, and you merely brought it back. So you checked with the doorman, huh? Oh, Eric, wasn't it silly of me to think you were carrying on with that cute girl? <laughs> Whom you didn't even know from Eve. But I do. What? I do know her very well. What's that? Betty and I are in love, Hannah. What? And it was all you're doing. Poetic justice. Because we never even knew each other until then. Why, you... you you're lying. I was right in the first place. It had been going on all the time, just as I said. Have it your own way. I could always read you, Eric. Read you like a book. You're sure of that? I knew it was that cheap actress. I knew it because I'm always one step ahead of you, Mr. Two-Timer. You're not dealing with just anyone. You're dealing with a lawyer's daughter. And that one-cylinder brain of yours was never a match for mine. Never will be. Well? What now? I want a divorce. Oh, never. You think I'd give her the satisfaction? I want a divorce, Hannah. Oh, Eric, how could you say all these things to me? How could you? You did it to yourself, Hannah. That crazy jealousy of yours. Oh. I tell you, I never did know her before. You promoted a triangle that never even existed. So go on, dig your own grave. Why did you say that? Those words. What words? Dig your own grave. The very words that woman hissed at me. I only meant... I see it now. Of course. But I'm one step ahead of you as usual. You're planning to murder me, aren't you? What? Murder you? Yes. Murder me. So you'll be free to marry her. Well, don't deny it. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> That was the seed. I'm telling the honest truth. Till then, the thought had positively never entered my mind in the remotest way whatsoever. Harm Hannah? Why, I pitied her. Even still loved her, in a way. But somehow... Yes, kill me. You want to kill me, don't you? You want to kill me. I know. She planted the seed in my mind, you understand? She planted the seed. Young and pretty, eh? That's the way you want one when I'm out of the way. She hammered the thought into my brain. Always know what's in your mind, don't I? It'd be heaven, wouldn't it? Heaven, wouldn't it, when I'm dead? Good heaven, stop it, stop it, Hannah. Can't stand to hear your thoughts spoken aloud, can you? <laughs> you don't fool me, Eric Green. I'm sharp enough to even see how you intend to murder me. I can give you a blueprint. What? I congratulate you on planning the perfect murder. I didn't know you had enough brains. What the heck are you talking about? What blueprint? Oh, don't pretend I'm on to you. You'll never outsmart me. I can read your mind. Like a book, sure. Oh, please, Hannah. Me and Betty have decided to give each other up if you want to know. So why on earth would murder enter my mind? Who do you think you're kidding, Eric? If she only knew it. That suspicious mind of hers was digging her own grave. Because now I really began to ponder a murder. If only I could extract that foolproof method from her. If I could be sure Betty still wanted me. Eric. Hello, Betty. May I come in? Yes. Yes, of course. Thanks. Eric, I thought we weren't going to see each other again. I know, but... Betty, I want you to wait. Give me a little time. A little time? Yes. I think Hannah is weakening. You mean she might give you a divorce? Yes. So if you still want me... Oh, Eric. Of course I still want you. But are you sure? Because I may as well tell you. Tommy Burt, will he ask me again to marry him? Are you certain Hannah will give you a divorce? Yes, yes, I swear it. Just wait a while longer, a little while longer, Betty, and you'll see. I have a plan to get her to divorce me. Oh, 
Oh, that was a wonderful dance, Eric. You know, you haven't forgotten a step. Oh, neither of you, Hannah. You still dance like an angel. I don't know what's come over you lately. You've changed so, Eric. Taking me out every night, shows, nightclubs. Why couldn't you ever see you're the girl for me, not anyone else? You and that busy mind of yours. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. We went over all that, and I said I'm sorry. That woman across the street, for instance. Couldn't you see I was just pretending all that business to teach you a lesson? Oh, <laughs> I had it coming to me, I told you. And was that mind of yours traveling? That uh, perfect murder plot, for instance, huh? <laughs> This silly little goose. Oh, Eric, don't. What on earth did you think I was hatching? Well, you'll die laughing. Okay, so I will. Well, you were staring rather intently at my medicine bottle that time we had the flare-up. Huh? And anyone with half a mind knows that an overdose of diatol could kill a person without leaving any trace of it in the system. Yeah, no kidding. All you'd have to do is to go and get one of my prescriptions sometime, alter it to a stronger dose, replace my bottle with this. I'd never be wiser. And poof. The perfect murder. <laughs> How's that for <laughs> Lucas? <laughs> Couldn't I have made a good criminal lawyer like my father? Admit it. Sure, I followed her blueprint the very next day. First, I paid a visit to Dr. Norton, the family physician. I told him Hannah was down with a slight cold and couldn't come. Then I asked for the prescription, just her usual diatol, which he'd given her so often. I altered the prescription ever so slightly. My next stop was the druggist. Uh, you uh, want this uh, prescription pill, eh, Mr. Green, eh? Uh, mm, for your wife, eh? Huh? Uh, from uh, Dr. Norton. Well, I, I can have it filled for you in about, uh, about an hour. Uh, call back in an hour, Mr. Green. Uh, I, I see you Mr. Green. Yes, is my prescription ready? Uh, you mean uh, your wife's prescription, Mr. Green? Yes. Uh, the dietol refill? Yes, yes. Is it ready? Well, what's the matter? Is it ready or isn't it? Are you asking about the prescription you left in this drugstore about an hour ago, Mr. Green? Uh, why, yes. Why do you ask? What's wrong? Who are you? Detective Santini. Come with me, please. You're under arrest, Mr. Green. <laughs> This is an outrage. I demand to know what I'm being held for. You did tamper with that prescription, Green, didn't you? Admit it. You're crazy. I want to see a lawyer. What are you charging me with? Attempted homicide. Attempted homicide? Yeah. You know, Green, when your wife reported her suspicions to us and demanded action, we thought she was crazy. What? We took routine action anyhow. She never at any time stopped suspecting about you and that other woman. That's right. What a head that woman had. Knowing you were going to kill her, she directed your efforts the better to foil. No. Oh, no. And now, Green, what was the name of that mouthpiece you wanted me to call in? Because, brother, you're sure going to need a good one. And so I submit, Your Honor, and gentlemen of the jury, that the prosecution has not, and in the very nature of things, could not establish a clear case of homicidal intent. Intent, gentlemen, against the defendant, Eric Green. And why? For the simple reason that he had not given the fatal overdose to his wife. And you must agree that even if the defendant had murder in his heart at the outset, which we deny, how could it be proved he would have given that overdose to his wife? Might he not have had a change of heart? Might he not have changed his mind and thrown that deadly liquid into the nearest gutter? <laughs> Find the defendant not guilty. No, no, no. You can't let this man go free. He'll kill me. He tried it before and he'll try again. Congratulations.
Congratulations, Mr. Green. We can't give you the electric treatment yet. But you'd better see that your wife stays healthy. Because from now on, if anything happens to her, brother, you're it. I was a ruined man from that moment. Acquitted, huh? That made a difference to people, huh? As far as the world was concerned, I was a would-be murderer. Something black and evil to be shunned like a leper. I lost my job. After nine years with the same firm, I lost my job. And no one else would hire me. And my friends, even the guys that knew me all my life, none of them were in when I phoned. They crossed the street to avoid having to talk to me. But the biggest blow of all was a letter the postman brought me just after the trial. Dear Eric, I've moved away because of the publicity. And it's no use trying to find me. I always thought you were so gentle and fine. How could you bring yourself to attempt such a vile thing? Tomorrow I'm going to be Mrs. Thomas Birch. And my wife? She had moved to a hotel and was suing me for divorce. I was a nice guy once, respected. She had ruined me. My whole life was a mess. I decided I must kill her. There was no room in the same world for the both of us. And yet... You'd better see that your wife stays healthy, Mr. Green. Get it? If Hannah should die, no matter how clever I planned it, even by remote control, even if I were a thousand miles away... Because from now on, brother, if anything happens to her, you're it. They'd still suspect me. Still, I, I decided to finish her off, even if I burned for it. Life meant nothing to me anymore, but just once to outbox her. I racked my brains. Is there really such a thing as a perfect murder? Somehow I sensed a road direction. Somewhere in Hannah's suspicious nature lay the perfect crime. Maybe by using her suspicions, I... Sure, something clicked. By following the twistings of her mind, I'd hit upon a plan. <laughs> Hannah, this is Eric. Hannah, don't hang up, please. What do you want? Hannah, I swear it was all a terrible mistake. Why, I never intended for one moment... Indeed? Hannah, if you give me half a chance to explain, Are I Are you could... through? If that's all you have to say, No, I'd no, like wait, to... wait, please. It isn't all. Hannah, I'm going away. I'd like to see you once more before I leave. For old time's sake. Oh, you would, would you? For old time's sake, eh? Yes. I'd like you to come over right now and have breakfast with me before I leave. Just the two of us alone. One last cup of coffee together, Hannah, to, to prove no hard feelings. Just you and me and a cup of coffee, Eric? Hmm? Yes. Just the two of us, huh? Just the two of us. Well, of course, dear. Why not? I'll come over. You get the coffee ready. <laughs> For you, Hannah. Well, thank you. And one for me. And now, I'll let you in on the real reason for our little get-together. Yes, Eric? You've ruined my life, Hannah. And I don't want to live anymore. I'm about to commit suicide. I want to give you the torture of witnessing it. Hannah, I've poisoned my cup of coffee. Well, let's drink to my exit. Come in, officer. What? Detective Santini. Hello again, Mr. Green. Officer, I brought you along because I was sure he was going to make another attempt to kill me. I can now prove my husband's guilty intent to kill me, which I couldn't before. Anna, what are you saying? Suppose we let her do the talking. Notice, please, that he has just served two cups of coffee, one for me and one for him. He is, as usual, stupid enough to suppose I don't know what he's up to. Now, wait a minute. Shut up. Go on, Mrs. Green. Not knowing, of course, that I would bring a witness along to this little plot of his. He has just told me he has poisoned his cup of coffee. That he intends to commit suicide with it. Very well. We shall see. Won't we, Eric? Obviously, he has poisoned my cup, as I shall now demonstrate. <laughs> 
Anna, what are you doing? There. We must exchange cups with him. And now, is it dear? Let us drink. Come on, dear. Don't pale so. Don't tremble. I'm drinking the poisoned coffee, aren't I? Anna, don't drink it. So let's drink to your journey. Bottoms up. Anna. Uh, there you see, Eric. You, I've... What the? She's dead. My gosh, she's dead. I warned her about my cup, but she drank it. You saw? Yeah, I sure did. You're a witness to what just happened, officer. Yeah. Must have been that suspicious mind of hers. Why, she dug her own grave, that woman. Why? Oh, yeah? You're not getting away with this, Green. What? I'm arresting you for the murder of your wife. What are you talking about? An unfortunate accident, that's all. Was it? I'm innocent. Are you? You were a witness. Now was I? An eyewitness. That crazy mind of her dug her own grave, didn't she? She sure did. And that's just it. I've an idea, Mr. Green, you could have planned it all this way. Every step. Knowing how your wife's mind worked, you could have known what would happen. Exactly from the time you invited her over for coffee. Anyhow, suppose we let the jury decide. <laughs> Well, there's the story. You asked me, did I kill my wife, yes or no? You see why I couldn't answer it like that? Yes or no? Who was the killer? Me or that suspicious mind of hers? Suppose you tell me. And so the curtain falls on Dig Your Own Grave, which was chosen by guest expert Eliza Lipsky, uh, a former assistant district attorney of New York and author of the memorable Hollywood film Kiss of Death. Next week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of a man who exploited human minds, only to find his own giving way as his enemies closed in on him. A story selected for your approval by Patrick Quentin. Until then, this is your host, John Dixon Carr, hoping you'll be with us again next week at this time. Dig Your Own Grave was written by Joseph Rusko. In the cast were Kenneth Lynch, Ann Shepard, Hester Sundergaard, Ron Dawson, and Jimmy Stevens. Music is under the direction of Emerson Buckley. Music was composed by Richard DuPage. Murder by Experts is produced and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan. All characters in our story were fictitious, and any resemblance to the names of actual persons was purely coincidental. This is Phil Tonkin speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.